So I've decided to paint our new shed myself. Instead of a rushed paint job by a contractor, if I could even find one during this pandemic, I can spend more time paying attention to the details, especially in the preparation of the shed. So let's get started. Looks like Lily wants to help me out. <laughs> using spray foam, I'll fill in the larger gaps. Then using non-paintable silicone caulk, I will fill the gaps and seams that are visible from the inside. Finally, I will apply paintable caulk around the windows. Fill the T111 siding groove openings along the top trim boards and caulk all the other cracks and openings that are visible on the exterior of the shed. After the caulk has thoroughly dried, we will paint all wood surfaces with a good quality oil-based primer. The shed will then be thoroughly prepped for applying a top brand of latex exterior paint that matches the colors of paint used on our house's T111 siding and trim boards. I already filled the gaps at the top of these end boards with spray foam. Now I'm going to fill the bottom gaps at every corner. really expands. I don't want to overdo it, but it'll be easy to cut it off at this end. Oops. That should do it. Now that it's thoroughly dry, I'm going to cut off the excess foam. You can see light from the outdoors coming to this groove in the T111 siding. I'm using colored silicon caulk because it will block the light and I will know I've filled the hole completely. I'm doing this to prevent insects and dust from entering into the shed. I don't want to overfill it. I just need to cover it up so it blocks the entrance. Use my putty knife here to press it in a little bit. Well, that should do it. I'm all finished filling the many groove openings in the shed. Got some rain showers out of there now. Interesting in here with the metal roof. As you can see, it's a little breezy outside, so I'm inside our new shed to record this video. Sorry for the echo. I purchased this locks on cock at Sherwin and Williams to fill the grooves in the T111 siding to close the gaps at the top of the boards. To conserve the amount of caulk I'll be using, I'm going to shove in some closed cell backer rod. I'm going to split this backer rod in half as best I can. It's flexible and soft, easy to do with the scissors. Then I'll make sections about an inch and a half long or so to fill the gaps in the T111. There are a lot of openings to fill here. I might have to get some more backing rod. I finished shoving pieces of backer rod into the grooves of the T111 where it meets the trim. Now I'm ready to seal the openings using this Loxon caulk. 
Loxon, made by Sherwin and Williams, is an industrial grade caulk. I find that keeping a rag soaked with mineral spirits is handy for cleaning up your tools as you go. You can also use the rag for wiping off excess caulk on the wood. Ready to go. If you wipe a little bit of mineral spirits on your glove, you can smooth it out even better. Last row of opening to fill. Get this done today. The caulk has to dry at least 24 hours before painting. Pretty hard to use a tool in this small area. Wipe some of the excess off with saturated paper towel with mineral spirits. Works good. We're getting set up to paint the primer this morning and Lily is kind of enjoying our cardboard, but that's okay. Lily's inspecting our painting supplies. Let's hope she does not do that when it's full of paint. <laughs> 